Good morning and welcome to the Bright Morning Show. Of course, this is your favorite program on TV. Welcome on board. We have a whole lot planned out for you today. And uh, I just want you to be relaxed because today's program is going to be very, very enjoyable. I am Dorkon Rimdan. And Mono Balagubo, thanks for joining us this lovely morning. We'll be kickstarting the show with our tips for today. And uh, on today's show, we'll be looking at 10 tips to help avoid ugly arguments. Absolutely. And from there, we'll be moving on to bring you the weather forecast. That is where we give you an insight of the outlook of the weather. And from the weather today, we'll be looking at some of the top stories breaking in on our national dailies. And uh, you want to stick around to know what's happening in Nigeria and also around the world. And the Bright Morning News is there to break it down for you in details. And from the Bright Morning News, we'll be looking at some of the big stories of yesterday and, of course, are the ones that broke in early this morning and just try to analyze them and see what we can learn from uh, this information, whether it has to do with governance, corruption, uh, politics, whatever it is. We are here for you today on the Bright Morning Show. You don't want to miss a thing. At all, speaking of missing a thing, uh, we thank God that uh, to an extent, you know, uh, the fuel price is going to be dropping down now to about 133%. Uh, so um, it's quite encouraging for Nigerians considering the whole for fuel scarcity we've been through and the hike in fuel prices. Of course, definitely. We'll go on the short break and when we come back, we'll delve straight into our tips for today where we'll be looking at 10 ways to avoid unnecessary arguments. Welcome back. Those are our tips for today's segment. And here we'll be talking about 10 ways on how to avoid arguments. It could be in your workplace. It could be in your family, in your house. It could be in your daily conversation or relationship with people every day. So we need to know how to avoid unnecessary arguments, especially now that there's so much happening in Nigeria and people are, are agitated very easily. So uh, we'll be bringing you tips. And our first tip here says that you need to understand that anger itself is not destructive. I think this just tells me that it's okay to be angry, but how how you handle your anger is what is important. Uh, I don't want you looking like that lady there with her mouth open if you're having an issue with anybody. Okay, so there is a vast difference between anger and rage. She definitely looks like she's raged. When someone is angry, they need to state their feelings. They don't break things or relationships. This is rageful behavior. So if you're angry with somebody, you should uh, be able to express yourself. Just go straight to the person. Hey, look, this is what has gone wrong. And please, I don't want to stay angry at you. Can we just uh, sort this out? But don't get uh, enraged about that thing. When you get raged about the thing, it breaks uh, relationships. All right, and that will lead us to our second tip. And uh, this one says, talk about your feelings before you get angry. So when you, a friend or colleague at work, or whether it's at home with your wife or your children, you can approach the situation as it happens and deal with it in a very safe way. So it may not get to the point of being an argument. Sometimes things just need to be verbalized, and most arguments can be avoided if the other party is willing to talk. So it's all about talking things through. Sometimes 
by the time you're done with the anger and all of that, you're just wondering to yourself, how come I spend so much time, you know, talking nonsense and with emotions and the rage coming out and all those things are not even necessary. So sometimes you just got to talk about it and, you know, get to know how you really feel before you get angry. And when you are able to relate with a person, the person will probably realize that, okay, I did something wrong and I have to apologize and say I'm sorry. Our second tip may be about talking, but then our third tip says that you shouldn't raise your voice. So uh, talking is one thing and the manner in which you communicate is another. If you have an issue with somebody, just go straight to the person. Hello. And if you know you're, you're the kind of person that when you're angry, you can't control uh, the way you express your anger. Maybe you should wait till you're a bit calm. If you've cooled down, then you approach this person and tell them, look, okay, this is what has gone wrong. Don't raise your voice. Raising your voice can get the other person feeling very bad. So it's amazing how issues of hurt feelings or differences can be resolved with a whisper. So I, 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 some, some people also say that, especially if you're giving counsel to people, you shouldn't yell, you shouldn't raise your voice, you shouldn't scream at the top of your voice before uh, you can express yourself or how hurt you are. Uh, it's even uh, glaring in this picture that those people who scream that way might just have the little brains and those who don't say so much have more information or more value to add. So don't raise your voice. Of course. And another tip to add to that has to do with uh, threatening your relationship. Because most times when two people are angry, they tend to say things they are not supposed to say. And this goes to say that don't take every argument as a threat to your relationship. And this type of emotional blackmail puts the other partner in a panic or flight mode. So while you're telling them you want to leave, they may be making plans to find a roommate or another friend or something. So in addition, they may be so devastated by the thought of losing their family and they can go into depression and unable to give you what it is that you need. So making out threats or, you know, just saying stuff like that, it, it's not the mature way to, to handle stuff like this in situations like this. So you want to just like take it really cool so that you don't put the other person on flight mode because I, for one, as an individual, I try as much as possible to avoid getting myself in, into trouble, okay. whether is in the workplace or is at home. I just try to mind my space and I also respect the fact that people give me back that same uh, pay me back in that same accord because if you don't step into someone's lane then definitely people won't step into your lane and you know when someone is angry at me I just have this natural way of you know I feel threatened and I just want to you know just go leave the person alone and that's true i could testify and to be on myself as an it's not a good habit anyway but you know i just have this way of cutting myself off it's okay. from, from that person it's better than screaming at the person you know i think that's also okay and, and the just to add to that, and that's one of the reasons why you, you don't have to threaten, because when you threaten somebody, just it yeah. tends to cut short the relationship. And when you look at it from above, you'll discover that the reason why he's leaving is not even worth it at all. I mean, it's just simple argument yes. or disagreement over a particular issue. Yeah, and like uh, some people would say, there are many fishes in the river. So if one isn't doing very well, you can always go fish for another. But then it's not worth risking your relationships. And Mono said something about maturity. Uh, if you're talking about ways to handle or avoid arguments in the workplace, you need to be mature about it. And that takes us to our next point, which is our fifth point. It says you shouldn't stock uh, issues don't stockpile issues if you know you have a problem with somebody just express it don't let it keep uh, mounting up in your mind and then one day you just burst by the time you do that you know it might be uh, uh, beyond control so this is where you bring up issues from the past to use a hammer against whatever problem your partner or uh, the person a friend uh, asked for help with so deal with their issue first and if you really have unresolved feelings 
from past problems. Talk about them at another time. You know, some people, or would I even say our Nigerian parents, we just have this very <laughs> funny attitude. You know, if you do something today, say, hey, hey, she has done it again. That's how two days ago you did this again. That's how last week you still did this. That's how three, three weeks ago you did this. You know, they just have this way of telling you so many things you did in the past. But, but they are our parents, and we know that uh, they, they're not necessarily mad with us. They just want us to do things better. But in your relationship with people, don't stockpile uh, uh, arguments, don't stockpile issues. As it comes, just address it and let it go. Okay, we'll go on the short break right now, and we've got more tips for you still coming on the Bright Morning Show. Don't go anywhere. This is the place to be. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're still bringing you tips on how to avoid unnecessary arguments or arguments from getting out of control. And we brought you five tips to recap. The first one says you should understand the, that anger itself is not destructive. And the second tip we told you was talk about your feelings before you get angry. And the third said don't raise your voice. Don't and, and then, then the fourth says that you shouldn't threaten your relationship. And the fifth tip we brought you is don't stockpile. And now moving to our sixth tip, it says don't avoid your anger. If you stuff your feelings long enough, you will explode and, of course, say or do things that you will, will regret. So anger does not diminish love. You can be angry with those you love. And, in fact, the ones we love hurt us, hurt, hurt us the most. So don't, don't avoid your anger. And that's different from, you know, stockpiling things like Dorokon mentioned before. So it's all about, you know, you, they, there are ways to let it out. Maybe you take a walk and try to examine some of the things that have happened before you know how to approach the matter because anger, if you let it, it could destroy you. We've seen cases where people have committed murder. Some people have committed even suicide, yes. hurting themselves. And the, the, the annoying that. thing about anger is that the person you feel, you know, hurts you is probably somewhere drinking, having fun with his or her family, and you're just all with yourself with all that negative energy and poisoning your soul poisoning your spirit and that's not really really going to help you have a beautiful life and also in trying to resolve this anger issue you need to create a process for resolving problems without anger you you might have uh, issues but then you can always resolve it without uh, expressing anger so start each by each of you taking five minutes to state your feelings yes so if you have a problem with somebody someone in the office just say okay please I want us to iron this out you explain what the person has done wrong to you and the person gets a chance also to express themselves sometimes we interrupt when we're done talking and the pe other person is expressing with uh, uh, him or his or herself you find yourself interrupting them you shouldn't allow them express themselves as well and then take a 20 minutes break to think about things and come back uh, to the table for another 10 minutes to discuss how you think you can best deal with the problem and also know that it's okay if the problem doesn't get solved right away yes but just make sure that your relationship isn't spoiled you can take it's, it may take a while before you get uh, to resolve that issue but just make sure that you guys are still in talking terms and of course that will lead us to our eight tips and it talks about abuse never allowed if you i mean we've seen cases where people get so outrageous yes and angered and then they begin to use foul words use the f words use the s words and, and the yeah. n word in and fact, you know it it's just a way i I wish someone could just take a camera and just video the person in that attitude. And then when the person has, yeah. you know, is, uh, is done with all of that and is calmed down, the person will just, Play back. I mean, I look like an <laughs> animal. I mean, look at that man. He's a human being, but looks like an animal. You know, a lion going to divorce somebody <laughs> and it's scary. It is. It definitely is. In fact, yesterday I, I read a story about a husband and a wife. The wife got killed 
do you know why? <laughs> would you know why? Because the wife changed the channel because of a remote control. She picked it and she changed the channel and he didn't know when he lost control and pounced on her. Some way, somehow, she died. And these are things that we see happen every day. So try to just control your anger because lives may get lost in the process. Of course. And in addition to that, you know, there was a story of, you know, a couple, you know, in the bedroom. The wife says, I love the lights being on. The husband say, no, I like it off. Yes. No, I I want it off <laughs> no i want it on and i mean seriously they the, the married they, they lost the marriage you understand i mean for that flimsy excuse mm -hmm. when there are other uh, problems of abuse that could make a home you just break into two but i mean how could you be arguing over you know whether the Switch. light is on or whether it's turned off it's, right. it's amazing what anger it can do is and then you wonder if those people really love themselves before they got married if something like that can make you split talk about love love is all about you know taking sacrifice. the burden of somebody yes it's all about sacrifice and giving hmm. if 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 your definition of love doesn't have giving and sacrifice to it then i wonder what the definition of love is <laughs> And speaking of love, now next point here, yeah, this one says that you should um, don't engage. If you love somebody, you really wouldn't engage. If you notice, and, and you know, sometimes we get very familiar uh, with ourselves, so we know when the person is getting mad and you know how they express their anger. So if you know that that person is getting to that point, maybe you should just walk away. Or maybe you should just uh, nicely say, honey, I'll be back. Or if it's your colleague in the office, just tell the person nicely, please excuse me, I don't want things to get out of control. And then you leave so do not engage as much as as you can try to avoid unnecessary arguments uh, you know sometimes it's it's glaring you know that uh, you're going to talk to somebody and you can already tell that that person is going to get furious or you notice the person is in a bad mood don't tell that person the bad news yet wait till the person is in a brighter mood before you share the information and of course our last tip this morning says listen to your body you know, our body has a way of releasing chemicals that may cause us to react in ways that we don't want to react. And it's very, very important to listen to your body. You know, some people are so angry, you find their hands shaking. And before you know, their hand is shaking. They yes. pick up a, a glass cup yes. on the table and throw it That's at the true. other person. That's true. And some cases, you know, you see people fighting on the streets. Someone is so angry, then hmm. picks up stone. Yes, I've seen that. And throws the stone at the other person. Wow, so it's very important for us to really take a hold of ourselves. And you can actually listen to your body. If you find your body vibrating, that <laughs> means leave that particular scene. Honestly. Don't stay there because you And the beautiful thing is you see p two people quarreling and you expect mature adults to actually come into the situation and take over the situation. But they just stand there looking, yes. adding more fire. Ah, the did he call you? Did he say your mother is stupid? Yeah. You know, and they just keep adding more fire into the situation <laughs> and it's amazing and you see people injured you see people you know bedridden in the hospital as a result of reacting to anger and it's very 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 important that we really take these tips to heart today it is. and maybe we're preparing the day for you and knowing it because you're probably going to go to work today well, and yeah. somebody insults yeah. you That's someone true. annoys you or does something okay let these words abide in you today of course and or maybe you even heard something yesterday and like today Day I'm going to deal with this person. <laughs> Sometimes it's also good to just sleep over some things. Maybe by the next morning you're fine. And you were talking about people on the road picking stones and glass, you know, or having an argument and going the whole extra mile. I think that is acute anger. And I think you should also seek medical attention. It's fine. Some people might just have a disorder. Yes. So you can go ahead, seek medical attention, or go to a counselor, get talked to, or express yourself, and let's have issues uh, resolved so that our country as a whole will be a better place we just brought you 10 tips on how to avoid unnecessary arguments we'll go on a short break and when we return the bar morning show continues
Welcome back from the break. If you just joined us, this is the Bright Morning Show. My name is Mono Balagbubu. And I am Dorcon Rimdan. All right, uh, we'll be starting our review of the headlines coming from our national dailies with the Sun newspaper. And uh, the top five first stories here are a group of our political stories, so I think I will just take all in a stretch. And the first one here says, Echoes of Controversial Delta Council Election. This says, 2019, PDP's last-ditch effort at relevance. And this says, appointment of dead persons, embarrassing, coming from Etim APC chieftain. And this says, Emo 2019, Osu leaders dump Okorocha and endorse Ararume. I mean, a lot of stories on the 2019 election. I thought uh, the Senate, you know, were giving us a good lead, especially for politicians in the country to be more focused on what's at hand now, be focused on governance and leadership rather than uh, 2019 political ambitions. Well, I guess that's another sector that will be attending to all those uh, issues in the country. I'll be bringing us uh, headlines from the Punch newspaper. And uh, this one here reads, uh, Rep. Summon Burate, others over disrupt disputed Delta land. And this other one uh, is talking about the Shiti group. And it says, Shiti members coalition demand El Zakzaki's release. Well, thank God that we brought to you some days ago that uh, he is hale and hearty and uh, thanking Nigerians, uh, supporters, for prayers for him. A uh, group of headlines here says, NFF rules out World Cup program. And uh, we'll be watching to see their performance and uh, definitely we'll be giving our support also. You know, watching all these matches can really put someone in a lot of tension. Of course. <laughs> And uh, speaking of matches, we actually have somebody, a football legend, who uh, has retired on our variety segment. So we'll let you know on the no we'll let you on the know. Okay, still more sport headlines here. This says NPFL lobby stones Rangers in Enugu, and uh, Nadal calls for greater revenue share in professional game. Okay, I'm still bringing us headlines uh, from the punch. And this one says, four suicide bombers hit Borno, killed 10, and injured 65. This is um, quite surprising, and I think it's like a mockery to the security uh, concerning our security in Nigeria because uh, here you're hearing the federal government telling us these Boko Haram attacks have been resolved and we still keep hearing uh, headlines or seeing stories like this, that this place has been attacked, that place has been attacked. It's very unfortunate. Of course, very unfortunate. Uh, headlines here still coming in from uh, the Sun newspaper. Gas explosion, plant operation predates residences and this is coming from the DPR. Uh, tanker drivers threatening to boycott Jebba Mokwa Road. And uh, this one says uh, former US CFTC chair James Stone to speak at NSE. Okay, uh, you said something about a fire or gas explosion. This one too has to do with that. And it says, fire got Yola market. And I don't, uh, I can't really understand why uh, different parts of the country are either getting, uh, there's either a gas explosion or there's a fire outbreak. And now it's in Yola market. It's quite an unfortunate event there. And this one also says, herdsmen destroy ex naval chiefs' farms. Taraba rejects cattle colony okay the cattle colony issue is still ongoing it has been for a while now and this one says efcc arranged justice unusa for alleged corruption speaking of corruption uh, patients jonathan's uh, some uh, properties of patients jonathan here in abuja were brought down yesterday they were destroyed by the efcc we'll be bringing you details on a variety segment of course, just a few more headlines. Uh, headsmen bombers kill 16 in Benue in Bono State. And uh, drama as Senator Ogweji announces defection to APC recounts. And uh, still more stories here says APC alleged tenure elongation bid splits governors. NWC, you might want to check out that on the Sun. Uh, EFCC arraigns ex-governor's son, George, over alleged fraud. Of course, uh, 
they uh, picked that they broke that story broke in a few days ago and uh, this says federal government spends 784 billion naira on fuel subsidy that's a lot and uh, even with the subsidy nigerians are not buying fuel at the price that they ought to buy them and uh, this says are uh, non indigenous endorse wiki for second term Okay, I'm still looking at the Punch newspaper here, and it says uh, Omokare firms' accounts frozen by worldwide order stand big IBTC. And this one says Com Constitution Amendment tops agenda as gov governors meet in Abuja. This other one also says Communications Minister attacks Ajimobi in letter to Buhari Oyegun. And it's quite interesting to see how uh, so many people now feel that they, they have an opinion or they have a say in saying who should run uh, for elections and who should shouldn't and why they should or why they shouldn't. Well, this one also says court remands 79 year old over alleged 9 million naira fraud and uh, doctors protest with coffin as Jude Sachs 68. All right, I'll be bringing you headlines coming in from the Tribune newspaper. Uh, the first one here says, 2019, my Guba ambition still intact, coming in from GNI. And uh, Rawlings, Quara's governor's wife, orders for Think Kitchen 2018. And we still have more headlines uh, concerning headsmen. And uh, this one here talks about... Um, uh, Okay, how headsmen destroyed my 45 hectares farmland coming from the ex-chief of a naval staff. And there have been issues of, you know, uh, people saying these headsmen are being protected and all of that. Uh, well, I hope we have time to talk about it. And uh, this one says, gunmen abduct American and Canadian in Kaduna and kills two police men this is the second time we're seeing uh you know uh, security officers being killed and the last one was in benue state and moving on this one says buhari to lead nigerian delegation to the african union submit and uh, another one i will do uh says headsman killings fire shame meets fulani benue people in ikiti and once against our talk okay still on fire shade the punch newspaper actually put that story like this and it says fire shade summons peace meeting warns fulani thieves against reprisal and uh, uh, coming from the air chief uh, this one says um fired fighter jets helicopters not enough to tackle insecurity and uh this other one says army scissors 63 bags of cannabis and uh, there's all also another one on concerning our 2019 elections that are upcoming and it says 264 candidates will re return on a post in Oshun local government poll or SEC bus and uh, there's also another headline speaking of the INEX readiness and INEX readiness for 2019 polls uh, this just shares that uh, they're they're preparing very well and they're doing a whole lot to ensure that the elections in 2019 move smoothly and of course, still looking at headlines coming in from the Nigerian Tribune. This says Nigeria loses one three million naira annually to education tourism. And uh, this says health minister cautions on meningitis. And uh, another one here talks about uh, Niger Delta Avengers threatening to resume deadly attacks on oil facilities. I mean, we've been looking at uh, problems with insecurity, and now Niger Delta wants to come again. I mean, at this yes, point, Niger how Delta. much can Nigerians even take? Avengers. And I hope uh, the authorities and the, the military operation that is at work in, Ni in the Niger Delta can actually bring things uh, uh, to, to order. You, mean, you know, one would think that creating a ministry for Niger Delta, you understand, it should be able to resolve some of these issues. But now, fresh uh, threats to begin to destroy fresh facilities threat, in the country. And one would want to wonder if it's because of the uh, sudden quest of the Fulani headsmen that once uh, cattle colonies opened in the all, uh, all states in the country, maybe the, uh, this could just be a form of retaliation or something that, denied, uh, that makes the Niger Delta militants to want to come back and uh, start constituting a nuisance in the country. It's, it's only, one could only wonder if that's the major reason that they are coming up now. Of course. Well, that's more reasons for you to check out uh, the Tribune News. 
newspaper. Okay, um, this one says NGO advocates cleaner environment in mosque. I'm bringing us headlines now from the Nation newspaper. And this one says developing Nigeria's maritime sector. And this other one also says DSS chief relieves kidnapped kingpin one is and are uh, still on security security tightened as killings kidnappings spread and our uh, police here say that uh, we have developed men to fish out abductors all right i'll be moving to the daily trust uh, just to take a few headlines before we go on the short break uh this says uh, let's face kidnapping before we get carried away and uh a sad one here says Two bonds to death as car runs into trailer at uh, Abaji. That road is really a challenge. If you, I mean, do a statistics of findings of the people that have lost their lives, wow. it's really, really quite sad. Well, moving on, this is an update on the Buari crisis. And uh, coming from an ex-chairman says it's uncalled for. And this talks about two gas explosions that kills eight people and injured about 10 people in Lagos. Okay, just before we go on a break, uh, let me bring us this headlines. And it says, uh, it's, it's actually a repeat of the headline on the Nation newspaper. I brought it uh, on the punch from the punch newspaper. And it says, um, headsmen burn ex naval uh, chiefs' farms in Quara. And one would only wonder why that kind of act would be done. Is an ex naval chief, so why go burn his farm? By the way, you, you, you were complaining about people uh, carrying, uh, you were complaining about cattle rustling you know people stealing uh, their cows and there was also a report in Plateau State yesterday about uh, Fulani headsmen saying that the youth in Plateau State hold about 350 or 250 you know, 350 or so amounts of cattle and now we have them burning uh, the farm of uh, somebody I'm not sure that's that's actually good news all right, we'll go on a short break and we come back. We'll still be looking at more stories coming from the National Dailies. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're still bringing you headlines from all our national dailies. And uh, I'm looking at uh, stories from the Punch newspaper right now. And then this one says, oh, okay, I brought Punch newspaper first. I'll be moving on to the Nation newspaper. And this one says, presidential system too costly, complicated for Nigeria. And this is said by Akande. And there's also the headline that says, senators allege foreign militia invasion. And customs has an issue here and it says one shot dead in customs smugglers row and uh, this other one here says increased shell, shell uh, production threatens oil price ramp and it's coming in from OPEC all right still taking headlines from the Daily Trust and uh, this one here says 60% uh, Guzape infrastructure completed in uh, Dantata and Sowe. And uh, moving on, Pastor gets bail for defrauding widow of 3 million naira. And uh, this says uh, court orders arrest of driver who jumped bail. And uh, two more stories before I move on to another paper. Dalong inaugurates para sports appeals electoral committees. And the last one says 2018 World Cup. Raw signs improved two-year contract extension. Okay, I'm uh, moving on to the Vanguard newspaper now. And this one says, Iqpiazu commends foundation for scholarship to 60 indigent students. And uh, this other one says, Hijab controversy. Uh, Quara Muslims ask law school to induct Firdaus. Firdaus. And uh, this just reminds me of uh, an issue that uh, came up uh, during the um, 
uh, during here in Abuja, I think it was here in Abuja, when uh, some people were called to bar, and, and this lady was putting on a hijab, and there was a whole lot of controversy about her putting on the hijab, and it was not uh, um, in line with the regalia of the, the, the profession. Well, this is a new development, and you would want to check the Vanguard newspaper for more details. Okay, this one says, Delta community protests neglect arrest of indigents by oil coy. And uh, this other one says, bus conductor shot dead by customs men in Lagos. You might wonder why that kind of thing would happen. Uh, you can check the Vanguard newspaper for details. And this one says, we need violence-free campaigns and elections. Most definitely, I think uh, this is the time to campaign against violence uh, during elections. So we need INEC and all our security officials to get uh, to tighten security against uh, that period. All right, I'll be taking a few headlines coming from the New Telegraph. The first one here says internal security and weapons proliferation. And uh, another one coming from our senators. Uh, yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? They were talking about the fact that uh, IGP has about two weeks uh, to put things in order in uh, Benue State. And now they have words for the president saying in security, act or resign. Hmm. Okay, uh, that's a tough word. A lot of people Definitely. have been giving the president, you know, really harsh words. I mean, Very it's it's all about words. action right now and not just uh, 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 press releases from Twitter handle and all that. Okay, moving on. This says militants to federal government restructure or we will blow oil installations. Hmm, and I think this is the way. Uh, still coming. I think this is, should be coming from the Niger uh, Delta militants to the okay. federal government. Yeah. And probably this is how the New Telegraph puts it. Uh, that's an issue we really, really don't want to talk about. And we hope it doesn't that. become something that we are talking about, just like the Benue killings that has been everywhere since uh, the 1st of January. Uh, more headlines still pouring in. This says Adima, 50% of Nigerian couples experience infertility. This is really an issue and uh, you can check it out uh, on the new Telegraph. Uh, just a few sport headlines. This says are uh, Okay, our political head, uh, headlines, I beg your pardon. Uh, 2019, Buhari will find it difficult to be re-elected, uh, coming in from uh, Sheikh uh, Gumi. And uh, this says Buhari has failed his supporters, uh, still coming from Gumi. And uh, this says 2019, Ijebu agenda as a Mawson's albatross. And uh, the final one I'll take from the New Telegraph says APC remains the party to beat in 2019, coming in from uh, Oyiti Loi. Well, we'll see more about that in 2019. Okay, I'll be moving up and wrapping up with this day newspaper. And the first headline here reads, Five killed in Benue in fresh herdsmen attacks. Wow, that is not something we want to be hearing now, considering that 73 or 70 to 73 people were actually killed recently. And this one says, Plot to remove Saraki remains strong. Misao warns and market uh, capitalization. This is definitely on business. Hits new high of 16 trillion naira as bulls sustain hold. And uh, this other one says, 78 ex-US ambassadors write Trump over shithole slur. Some people are not taking that very lightly. And this other one says, UK appoints minister for loneliness. And uh, still bringing us headlines from this day. This one says, gunmen kill two policemen, abduct two foreign nationals in Kaduna. Yes, this is definitely a repeat of a headline that Mono brought to us. And uh, this other one also says, uh, plot to remove Saraki remains strong and missile warns. And uh, APC shelves meeting with governors. Okay, I'll, the last headline I'll be bringing from this day newspaper says, Kish, El Wafai has failed Kaduna people. And just before we wrap up, this is coming from the Premium Times. And it says Nigerian government, Lagos claim to... Uh, lay claim rather to 28.5 million naira properties stolen by civil servants. Talking about corruption, it's not just for the leaders, every Nigerian is involved. Uh, moving on, this says headsman killed in Ikiti as Fayo shares someone's peace meetings. And uh, this says soldiers, Indian hemp growers engage in shootouts in a war forest. 
find more details on the premium times. And now on the economy, Nigeria's contraction to drop to 0.6% in 2018. And this is coming from the African Development Bank. And now the last one I'll do for you this morning says, ex-Nigerian leader calls for more anti-corruption agencies. But if you ask me, the EFCC has been doing a good job. Well, if more agencies will be needed to curb the corruption in Nigeria, definitely uh, it's a welcome development. Okay, I said the same thing yesterday when I was gathering news and uh, somebody said, okay, the ESCC, yes, they are doing a good work, uh, job, but uh, that he notices that there's a certain trend. It's like uh, the people in power, when they come into power, they suddenly just like to go right back uh, to attack people that were there before. I, I think that was when I was getting the story of Patience Jonathan's uh, uh, plot here in Abuja, our house, one of her properties being brought down. Well, <laughs> we don't know uh, really why that person would make that statement, but uh, we'll bring you details of that, uh, yeah, that story on our variety segment. We'll just wrapped up our newspaper review segment. On our, we'll go on a break now and on our return and definitely we'll be bringing you stories that broke and are trending. Stay with us. Glad to have you back on the Bright Morning Show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, right now, we'll be looking at some of the big stories in the country. The first one talks about uh, NNPC begins the sale of petrol at 133.28 naira per litre and uh, enforce new rules. How exciting is this headline? It sounds very exciting. I just hope it's, it's truly all around Nigeria because when you see stories like that, people complain that it's only in Abuja and Lagos these things happen. We hope it's all around Nigeria. Well, thank God they are saying they are going to enforce new rules. Okay, uh, the NNPC says it has deployed more of its depots and others through put facilities to enforce the 133.28 Naira X depot price of premium motor spirit, better known as petrol. And uh, the NNPC also warned against uh, fuel herding and uh, enjoined motorists and other consumers to report any infraction by marketers or any NNPC retail outlets to uh, numbers. I think I'll just call one. Uh, one of the numbers is 090 You can check out details online. And of course, according to a press statement signed by the group general manager, uh, Group Public Affairs Division of the NNPC, Mr. Undu Nguamodu, obtained and uh, quoted the managing director of the PPMCs as saying that the measure became necessary to resolve the price differentials between some of its stakes. Holders, this is really a good move yeah. from uh, the NNPC, and we just hope that uh, the, these independent marketers of fuel can cooperate with the NNPC to ensure that uh, I mean, fuel goes for 133 naira. naira. Wow. I mean, which I feel it's a good price, honestly. Yes, compared to what that we're means seeing. transportation is going to reduce, mm. and uh, the price price of uh, transportation transportation fare, you mean there, yes. you know, from 225 or about to so 100 and I wow, wish we could go back to the days where you could buy a liter of fuel for 50 naira. Okay, 75, naira. that's the one you remember. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, this is good news for Nigeria. Yes, and uh, Adia stated that the queues were easing out across the country. Well, as of this morning, there are still queues in some filling stations. Okay, well, that's according to the path I monitored in Abuja this morning, looking at the Duse Kubwa. Express Road down towards uh, this particular
particular area uh, which is close to Guarimpa here in Abuja. But of course, uh, there might be, uh, you know, less queues in some other filling stations in Abuja and also in other parts of uh, the country. Well, uh, he further said the daily truck outs from the depots had increased from 1,733 trucks to about 2,000 trucks per day, adding that efforts are on to sustain the temple in order to flood the market with uh, petrol and he called on marketers to actually desist from hoarding and uh, the diversion of petroleum products to neighboring countries, stressing that the corporation was working hand in hand with the Department of Petroleum Resources and other security agencies to sanction defaulters. I don't mind getting free petrol, so those who want to default, I feel they should default so that uh, the DPR can actually give out all their petrol for free. After all, I will know their own belly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As some Nigerians will say. Yeah. Uh, our second story here says, Patience, Jonathan's house in Abuja demolished and you know, recently Patience has actually been on the news and uh, there have been issues uh, uh, with uh, EFCC. Okay, so uh, the detail here reads, one of the Abuja properties of former First Lady Patience Jonathan was yesterday demolished by the Federal Capital Development Authority. Uh, the building, which is located in Mabushi District of the nation's capital, was being used to run a foundation owned by the former First Lady. Reacting to the demolition, counsel to the former First Lady Emmanuel Anene said the FCDA had no right to demolish the building as the relevant authorities had been shown the building plan. He also argued that the matter was already in court and he accused the FCDA of disregarding the rule of law and due process in carrying out the demolition. And uh, to an extent, I think that, uh, I, I don't even know why it would be demolished. I think it's a waste of resources. Couldn't of something else be done? That I mean, to seize the property is, is enough. Okay, okay. Well, so when I, when I suggested that, uh, somebody said, uh, uh, I think I was talking with our news editor, and uh, he said that if uh, these kind of properties get seized, after a while you find out that government officials t get to buy them again and they decide to use them. No, he, he, there was just this way he made it look like there's this play uh, that goes on in that system and it's not so good. But then demolishing these things uh, shouldn't be the best so um, solution or the best way to go about it. Well, sometime before, I'm quoted now, and he said sometime before, people from development control came to the site alleging that there was no approval for the building and that uh, they met them at their office and showed them the approval, which they accepted. And we thought that the matter was over. They had earlier gone to court with the application for forfeiture of the property to the government, which they failed uh, to achieve at the Lagos High Court. Where this is just him saying almost the same thing I, I brought, but he's giving his story here. Well, the FCD, uh, however, argues that the demolished building had no approval and that a notice was served for the demolition of the property. Okay, and uh, moving to another exciting one here, coming from the richest man in Africa, talking about uh, Aliko Dangote, saying unemployment is responsible for the rise of killings in Nigeria. Okay, that's fresh. <laughs> Apart from the fact that it's fresh, it's quite surprising for me. That statement is uneducated. I'm sorry to use that word, but that's how it sounds. To blame unemployment as the reason for the rise of killings. Well, let's look at the details. Aliko Dangote says unemployment is largely responsible for the rise in the wanton killing and restiveness being experienced in many parts of the country. And he was speaking in an interview with uh, Channels TV and Dangote said gainfully employed persons are never behind the attacks and killings who told you so? Because oh. these men who are actually, they are employed. The people who are taking care of these flocks, of course, most of the killings we've seen recently has to do with the headsmen clash in yeah. Benue State. And that's what has been dominating since the beginning of the year. I quite understand that uh, unemployment is it, but there are so many other factors. And speaking of unemployment, these headsmen, some way, somehow, aren't they employed? Like, they're, they're doing their business. They're being that's paid business. because... Some of these rich folks we have in the north, are prob uh, the major majority of them are the ones who actually have these uh, cows that are being, you know, taken all around 
talking about nomadic farming, moving from place to pl yes. place to be able to get water for these flocks and uh, on and these cattle. You understand. And now, when you look at it critically, you discover that the majority. I was talking with someone this morning when we were coming to the office, and he talked about the fact that majority of the of the beef that we consume in Nigeria is not even coming from these people who are practicing nomadic uh, farming. That majority, because he works with an agricultural okay. feed that produces feeds mm. for uh, some of these uh, people who are into the business of you know selling uh, the cows and all of that. And he said a lot like in in Adamawa State, close to forty thousand cows have been you know, trucked and pushed out of Adamawa for sale. And that is the majority that Nigerians are consuming. So all these uh, people who are, you know, causing all these problems in in states like Benue states, you know, are just private individuals who think 2,000. He told me that a 25 kg gram of feed for these cows is 2,000 naira. And he says his, his company tried to make it really cheap for them to be able to afford it. But they will be like, no, that it's too expensive for them to to actually purchase them and so then they will prefer to allow these people to go about roaming around and grazing and when you look at it critically how many cows are they grazing at a time close probably 150 mm. will be the highest I've ever seen but I mean talk about 40,000 you really you want to supply and really do the big business and I mean you have to go in the thousands to be able to feed people on a daily basis you understand so Definitely, those yeah. people are employed yeah. they get these rich men pay these people to actually look after the flock so they are gainfully employed and when you then when we look at the Boko Haram uh, stuff too you understand these people the Boko Haram they they, they do press release don't they? And it shows, I'm just trying to, you know, really uh, express my, I won't say outrage Actually, rather. Actually, it's very it glaring. <laughs> <laughs> but then it makes me wonder how he drew to this conclusion. For somebody as exposed as this, you can't just exactly. pick up one item and, and one I issue don't want to say and generalize this, but it. I think I'm going to have to say this. Is it probably because he's from the northern part of the country? Okay. Because we've seen people who are from, you know, who identify... Uh, mostly with this Fulani people, you know, the way they give excuse for these killings, it, it's amazing. You understand their reaction towards it. But during yes. the IPOB issue now, we saw a lot of people saying a lot of things. Yes. Oh, Nigeria yes. should not be divided. These people are terrorists and, and all of that. Yes, they were tagged a terrorist group. There wasn't a So the lines of that. people that are being lost that were lost during that period is not the same uh, quality of life that had been lost right now. Honestly, uh, well, this is really, well, he goes on to say that if there are jobs, there wouldn't be anything like Boko Haram and there will not be anything like headsmen. Once you are engaged, you do not have time for mischief. Okay, now I want him to reflect and look back. Look at the people who are involved in this. Aren't they some way, somehow employed? Would you say, okay, uh, they are all not doing anything? First of all, these herdsmen, as I said earlier, they're, yes. they're, they're, do, they're, doing, they're, they're into business. And then you're saying unemployment. I also have a problem with that statement. But on, you know, unfortunately, I don't we, have... We've been playing the blame okay. game, honestly. And thank God for the governor that I, I apologized to uh, or Tom, you understand? Because blame game is not going to work. As a businessman, I would expect him to like, okay, let's try the ranching stuff. Benue is saying they don't have lands, okay? How do we, you, you understand, you know, all about preferring solutions. You understand, and that's how things will work. Talking about education, Dorokon, if you realize the, during the uh, Jonathan-led administration, a lot of effort was made towards education. But you can't force people to go to school if they don't want to go to school. It's the honest truth. Funny enough, there's this category of people who are fighting against ed education. Well, we'll go on a break now because we need to join our newsroom for the Bright Morning News. On our return, we'll be bringing you more stories. Please stay with us. The Bright Morning Show continues.